side note before I start, I'm filming at the worst possible hour. So the lighting may drastically change. I apologize in advance. Hey, I'm Anna Gonzalez. After doing all the basic tourist things in Philadelphia, like visiting the Liberty Bell Independence Mall or visiting City Hall, I suggest you attend these events and visit these places. I have two events and two places to tell you about today. The first is a collection of free art galleries. The second is a park down by the waterfront. The third is a historical garden. And last is one of my favorite beautiful buildings. These four things are a few of my favorite things to do in this city of brotherly love. Hope you enjoy! The first thing I'm going to talk about is an event called First Friday. This event occurs in Old City. Old City is known as America's most historic square mile. It is full of Philadelphia's rich representation in America's history. Lots of fun traditions occur there. One of my favorites is, well, First Friday. As you can tell by the name of the event, First Friday occurs on the first Friday of every month. All throughout Old City, there are art galleries open to the public. They're completely free. It's nice because some of them can get quite expensive, especially if you're visiting more than one at a time. First Friday is a year-round event and is never canceled. The galleries are open from 5 to 9. Each month, there are different art galleries open, so it's not always the same ones. The galleries are always full of beautiful pieces, sometimes paintings, drawings, or sculptures. Usually, each gallery has free snacks and water available, which I think is important to mention. Um, there are many restaurants to eat at in Old City, and small stores like antique shops are always open too. I have fun when I go to First Friday. <laughs> I usually bring friends and I suggest you do the same because it will be even more fun. In my personal opinion, it's more fun to go to this event when it's dark out. The streets are quiet and the galleries are usually a bit more empty by then. Going to the different galleries is always fun. The pieces reflect their influences. And almost none of them are alike. This month I went to First Friday and found three new galleries I liked. My absolute favorite gallery is the Center for Art and Wood. The Center for Art and Wood is a gallery that has pieces only made of wood. This gallery is my favorite because the pieces inside change very frequently. Also, there's a giant wooden door that I like. Um, I like the door because it has a very simple design cut into it and I really like the color of the wood. Another one of my favorite galleries is Solberg in Symmetry. The artist Lorraine Raywood was inspired by her natural surroundings. She creates her pictures by arranging photos symmetrically. I think that's really cool because the pictures become a lot more aesthetically pleasing. I really love going to First Friday. I go almost every month and I always have fun. Definitely think you should go to this event. It's really cool. It's a really cool experience and it's completely free. The second thing I'm going to tell you about is a place, a park specifically. So down by the waterfront at 301 South Christopher Columbus Boulevard, there's a park called Spruce Street Harbor Park. Spruce Street Harbor Park first opened in 2014, so it's a fairly new park. The park is open from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. most days but on Friday and Saturday is open until 1 a.m. It's a really cool place to go. The park itself has numerous colorful hammocks hung throughout the park. Above the hammocks, there are lights strung around the trees. There's part of the park that has a floating garden and hammock-like nets that you can sit on over the water. In a section of the park, there is a fountain Next to the fountain, there are life-size games. Right along the river towards the back of the park, there's a boardwalk type thing with food, ping pong, and a mini arcade. From May to September, St Spruce Street Harbor Park is hosting an event called Second Sunday Cinema Series. <laughs> it's a mouthful. On the second Sunday of each month, they're showing a classic TV show followed by a classic movie. 
May 12th was opening night for this. Um, this is a part of Univestival, the Univestival, Univestival, which is the weekend long festival that will kick off Spruce Street Harbor Park season with three days of exciting entertainment. During the winter, River Rink and Blue Cross team up to build an outdoor ice rink. At the rink, you can rent skates or bring your own. There is a cabin-like structure with couches, fireplace, food, and drink inside. There's also an arcade there. During the summer, they take down the ice skating rink and put up a roller skating rink. They have the same cabin structure set up, but it has different arcade games, food, drinks, and different couches. <laughs> so it's like summer themed rather than winter themed. Between the park and river rink is the Independence Seaport Museum. The Seaport Museum is open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. The museum has a boat shop and interesting facts about famous boats and designs of boats. Between going to the park and the Seaport Museum, you can pretty much spend all day there. The third thing I'm going to talk about is a place. Shifusu Japanese House and Garden is a really beautiful place to visit. It is located in West Fairmount Park. Shifusu House was conceived as part of a series for an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. The series exhibited three types of structures that shaped modern mid-century American architecture. Shifusu was the last part of this three-part series. The house itself was constructed in Japan before it was disassembled and sent to New York to be reassembled for the museum. When the exhibit closed, Shifusu was sent to Philadelphia to replace an old gate from a Japanese Buddhist temple. The gate was in Philadelphia from 1905 to 1955 before it caught on fire and burned down. The area where the gate was had been empty until 1957 when Shifusu was brought to Philadelphia. Then, in 1958, the garden was redesigned by Japanese landscape Sani Sano, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, to complement the new structure in the style of the 17th century viewing garden. The viewing garden has a koi pond, a tea garden, and a courtyard garden. Shifusu finally opened to the public on October 19th of 1958. It is still open today and is kept very well maintained. It's just as beautiful as it was when it opened. This house is very open and has almost no doors. There's one long hallway type structure stretching around the entirety of the house where you can look out onto the pond, the surrounding trees, and the viewing garden. Shifusu House sits on top of lush greenery and there are very many trees and other plants surrounding it. Shifusu's pond is full of large koi and other fish. You can buy food at the front of the desk to feed them. Before you enter the house, you are asked to take off your shoes and place them on a shelf. When leaving the house, you are asked to put your shoes back on before stepping outside of the house or onto the surrounding gravel. When in the house, they also ask you not to walk around the garden without shoes on. Like walk off the hallway structure onto the garden. They ask you not to do that. Each room in the house has a sheet of paper to explain the purposes of the room and how each different room is used. The admission isn't expensive and you can stay for as long as you like garden is really beautiful. I highly suggest you go because it's very relaxing and soothing. The last thing I'm going to talk about is my favorite old building. The corner of Broaden Ridge, right by Broaden Fairmont, you'll find my personal favorite old building. That building is the Divine Lorraine. The Divine Lorraine is a building that was designed and constructed between 1892 and 1893. In 1900, it was purchased by the Metropolitan 
Hotel Company and became the Lorraine Hotel. The building was then acquired in 1948 by Father Devine. He then renamed the building the Divine Lorraine. The building closed in 1999. Then, in 2000, it was sold. Six years later, it was resold to Divine Lorraine LP to be converted into apartments. In October 2012, the property was transferred to Eric Blumenfield. Three years after that, renovation plans were, were announced to finally convert the building into apartments. When the building was bought by Father Divine in 1948, he used to house people that had the same beliefs as him. Father Divine was a religious founder of the International Peace Missions Movement. He was a businessman and a civil rights activist. His beliefs were based on many widely accepted mainstream religion and optimism. He and his followers believed in the second coming of Christ. Many viewed him to be the leader of a cult, but in the eyes of his followers, he was essentially God. He required his followers to obey his international modest code, which required strict commitment, commitment to a pure lifestyle and abstinence from immoral action. He and his followers fought for racial harmony under the belief that there was only one race, the human race. The first time I saw the Divine Lorraine, I immediately took a, took a liking to it. Old buildings really fascinated me. I was extremely lucky and I got the chance to go into this building before it was redone. When I went in, I saw graffiti covering every inch of the walls. It's really cool to see such an old building right before it was restored. I wish I had gotten better pictures when I went, but I didn't. <laughs> the building's exterior is also really cool. There's a cutout in the middle of the building, and there are porches for in, on each apartment that face into the cutout in the middle. I think it's really cool, because I haven't seen buildings like that. I hope the apartments aren't too expensive because I would think I think that it would be really cool to live there. Okay, that's all I have to talk about today. I really urge you to go to or see the events and places I mentioned. They're very inexpensive and very fun. Well, those are some of my favorite things to do in Philadelphia. I just wanted to share them. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.